Welcome, adventurers. Today we're going to turn trash into this. I wanted to make more scattered terrain, and uh, I had a bunch of stuff laying around, but the corrugated paper I have, like I'm sure you can get, it's corrugated on one side, but the other side is flat, and I wanted to make something that looked more realistic, because you can see both sides of it in a lot of this. So I experimented here by gluing shish kebab skewers to cardstock, and tried out some various things until I found one that I actually liked here, which was where it's uh, five millimeters apart, about half a centimeter. This is just a soda can, sanded it down to remove some of the paint so that new paint would stick to it better, and just cut it out with scissors. Be careful if you do this, it can be sharp. Uh, I found that cutting it with the scissors actually rolls over the edge quite a lot so it doesn't get sharp. Then you cut little strips, and you place it on, and you use another cocktail skewer to press it into the gaps, and you end up with corrugated metal. Actual, literal, corrugated metal. This is a conditioner bottle. I have a lot of hair. Uh, all on my head. A little bit on my face, but you know, a lot of hair. So conditioner is important. Conditioner bottles in shampoo bottles, body wash bottles made out of a soft plastic. It's easy to cut, super easy to cut. Uh, here I'm using an X-Acto blade to make bullet holes. These are lids from laundry detergent. The one on the left here, the yellow one, I cut just with a knife and I got okay results. The blue one I cut with a Dremel tool and got obviously much better results. Did this just to show you that you can use whatever tools you have available. Just take your time and go slow. You should be able to get pretty decent results. And of course, use flocking and whatnot to hide it later if it doesn't turn out exactly like you want. These are a little tougher to cut, but not too bad. Now I'm using some EVA foam. I'm glued it on as like reinforcing bands on what are like giant pipe sections. And I managed to dump out all of my little rivets here. So. There's that. Put super glue in, in those, and you've got rivets. Did it on the bottle caps, too. Making some little uh, beveled edge platforms for those to go on, like that. And hot glue them down. Nothing too exciting there. Nothing too complicated, either. Here, I need platforms for these pieces of giant pipe. So I'm cutting out a rough section. I'm not measuring, I'm just doing it by eye because I want these to have a quote-unquote natural shape to them. Uh, I'm not trying to do anything terribly complicated, just rounding the sides and giving kind of a, not quite undulating, but almost kidney bean shaped, I guess with the size, more like a hot dog shaped shape mark where it goes so that way I can put a bead of hot glue down and make sure that you do most of this off camera if you're ever gonna have your own YouTube channel so that way nobody can see what you're doing it, it really adds to the intrigue and does nothing to help people learn like that also forget to record the part where you take wooden square dowels and glue them into place as well here I'm just taking some small twine that I got at, uh, at Michael's a while back make it look like they're tied up. Here I'm kind of marking out how I want my little walls to be shaped. Cutting out shish kebab skewers and matchsticks to be various posts that will be glued down and that the various pieces of wall will be glued to the corrugated metal and cut off pieces of plastic and whatnot. Here I'm using the X-Acto knife again to poke holes in the plastic and in the corrugated metal. And now I'm going to use a technique that I picked up from Bill making stuff recently. Um, I think it needs some work for me. It looked great when he did it. I uh, didn't have the same coverage. I base coated everything in black, xenothal highlighted with a gray, and three coats later ended up with, well, painted stuff. Now you guys have seen me speckle on paint before so I didn't waste time with it, but I did do a new technique this time for weathering it a bit more. And I just took a wet brush and kind of helped rub off some of the paint. 
thinned it out in areas and spread it around so it looked a lot more natural in the weathering. I really like that technique and I'll likely do it again. Here I'm just doing my standard wet the surface and struggle to take the lid off my black wash uh, and coat everything in a black wash. You know, craft paint, water, a little dish soap, and well, black wash. Now this looks a lot more like weathered leather than it does an old rusty pipe. So, you know, I guess you could use the same technique for that. Some dirty down rust, and then in select places, and then I'm gonna dry brush everything with this kind of dry rust colored paint. Uh, I feel that that really added a lot to it in the overall scheme of things. It definitely made things look a lot more dry and dusty, uh, like they have been sitting in a place where they're going to rust. And of course some black metallic model air paint I'm also going to dry brush on. Uh, I'm going much lighter with this than I did the rusty orange, because I just want some edges. Here I'm taking some regular EVA, uh, PVA glue and sand colored sand from a sandbag and glued it on. Of course I took watered down PVA glue and put a coat on everything. Now I'm going for kind of a nuclear reactor weird glowy thing with these so I paint them white and then I try to put on a thinnish coat of blue ink over the whole thing and my airbrush technique sucks uh, which is why when I have the opportunity I practice. You're about to see how bad it is. Now here I was trying to make thin lines in between each one of those ridges to show where the glow intensifies. And here in just a second you're gonna see exactly how not good I am at this. Ugh. But we carry on. I almost salvage this. So I dab off most of the wet ink revealing not only the blue underneath but even the white base coat of paint. With a little more practice I get a little better at it as you see here and that's what it comes down to is practicing more and more. Um, here I take 50-50 of the two other colors, the white and the blue, to make kind of a glaze to go over everything. And it kind of does the trick. It's not perfect, not by a long shot, and I definitely need more practice both with the airbrush and object source lighting as well as making glow effects. Now I'd like to thank my patrons. HM Girl Potpourri and LAJ. Thank you both. And again, everybody, Patreon's one of the best ways to support me. As well as subscribing. More than 50% of you aren't subscribed and it's free. All you have to do is subscribe. Now here's some glamour shots of it. The pipes, the glowing reactor looking things. I mean, I'm kind of getting there, but uh, I got some work to do. You can definitely see where I screwed up on that paint job. These little barricades, however, turned out wonderfully, I think. You can definitely see the faded paint, the rust, the buffed metal. And though I didn't cover it in video, I did coat everything with a matte spray paint because whenever there's sand and particles, I like to try to seal them in better. Here's just a few layout configurations. Some close-ups so you can kind of see more how things are laid out and what you can do with various figures. It is tall enough inside the tunnel for characters to go inside. You can create fairly dynamic barricades and make these in any shape configuration you want. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. Now go have an adventure in crafting.